Welcome to Category 1. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Sylvester Jacobs, and today we're going to be talking about Anomaly 13-15-15-14, otherwise known as the Eclipse. We all know what an Eclipse is, something you're never meant to look at directly, because if you do, you'll apparently lose your eyes. However, in this case, the Eclipse is something much, much worse. Now, this anomaly is indeed peculiar as it is told in the form of five separate articles, all considered anomalous and now all being shown on screen. The first being a series of incident files, missing person reports and legal battles revolving around the children entertainment conglomerate Archibald's Happiness & Co. The second being one of the anomalous videos found on the premises of Archibald HQ, locked away securely. The video addressing the anomaly we're going to be talking about today. The third being Atlantis theme park itself, the events that unfold there, the customers before the eclipse and what exactly happens to them after the eclipse, and while they're caught in the eclipse. The fourth being the arrival of Crescent to the park, and finally the fifth being the creature in the shadows. So, what is Anomaly 13-15-15-14? Anomaly 13-15-15-14 is an eclipse-like event that takes place irregularly around the three square miles that Atlantis theme park is made up of, the solar eclipse being only noticeable inside the park and outside of it slightly. However, what we refer to as an eclipse in truth is not an eclipse at all. However, what we refer to as an eclipse in truth is not an eclipse at all. However, upon further research, it appears to be some kind of fog that completely completely eradicates 87% of all light within the area, so objects are just about visible. However, the people inside the park find themselves immediately lost, as the anomaly turns the entire area into a timeless space that acts as a maze of infinite proportions, consistently looping around on itself. However, the main anomaly is not the so-called eclipse. It is, however, what happens in the park prior to and during the eclipse that really makes this document terrifying. On the day of an eclipse event, people throughout the park begin getting severely distorted and disfigured. Once they go on a roller coaster and visit one of the site attractions, their faces would mash up and contort in anomalous and unnatural ways during and after going on roller coasters and doing any of the activities within the park itself. Most would die during this process, and those that did would litter the ground of like ripped apart meat. The people that live long enough to see the eclipse are classified as Anomaly 12-15-15-14-A, otherwise known as the Contorts, who will later die during the actual eclipse event. The strands of dead meat lying about the park on the ground being classified as Anomaly 13-15-15-14-A-2, otherwise known as the Gristle, who will later vanish after the eclipse had finished. Now, after around five hours of people being distorted and disfigured by unknown forces, the eclipse takes place. A dark fog falls onto the theme park and anyone and everyone trapped there is picked off one by one by an unseen demonic-like entity that turns Atlantos into an infinite maze previously mentioned in order to hunt its prey. The anomaly only occurs during the solar eclipse that it seems to control and leaves the park completely empty upon finishing. The first recorded instance of Anomaly 13-15-15-14 was one year ago, wherein the customers began getting distorted. A message was sent to Crescent from an unknown source saying that something lives in the park that might be of interest to them. Accompanying this message were screenshots of emails and text messages sent from staff who were working a shift at the time, which only happened to fully send once the eclipse was over, for reasons unknown. The texts detailed that people were leaving rides with severe disfigurements in their bodies, unnaturally contorted. Other people began panicking as their children would return to them eight foot taller than they previously were, with beaten in faces crying that their necks hurt. During this time, any and all attempts to leave were somehow stopped by the park itself, as everyone attempted to vacate the premises numerous times, however, just found themselves back at the heart of the park. Those who are not disfigured and manage to stay away from roller coasters after seeing that what it did to people would form groups and hide, attempting to find ways out and calling for help. During these five hours, other people would enter the park in the hopes of having a good day out. However, only when they crossed the entrance line do they see what the people there really look like. Then finally, the fog descends and every single living being within the entire site is killed off one by one, leaving the park eerily empty. This event would repeat itself on a monthly basis, specifically the 13th of every month. In normal time, outside Atlantis theme park, the eclipse lasts no longer than 7 minutes and 32 seconds. 
It doesn't look like there has been a cloud of darkness cast over the park from the outside. However, it is noticeable that the people there don't seem happy. Like the park itself attempting to project an image of the people inside to the people outside to make things look normal. However, one noticeable attribute to the Eclipse event is that anyone that attempts to enter it for some reason walk away like they can't be bothered to go in and do not want to be anywhere near the place. Even with further prompting and attempted persuasion to enter the park, all the people that try end up becoming extremely aggressive and violent, attacking anyone that attempts to force them to enter. However, for everyone within the Eclipse, time can stretch out for weeks at a time until every single person stuck in there dies. Crescent was made aware of this peculiar place through hundreds of missing person reports, arrest warrants, police activity and court allegations against Archibald's Happiness & Co, which led the company to investigate some of the other properties Archibald's Happiness Co owns, such as Anomaly 1-14-9-13-1, Happy & Michaels, and Anomaly 20-18-15-14-9-3, The Barnyard Bunch, as well as Anomaly 8-15-12-5, The Abyss Below the Nursery. Because of these occurrences, Crescent initiated operations Uriel. Noble Task Force Unit, the Nightshades, were sent into Archibald's Happiness and Co. HQ in order to pertain any and all information regarding the company's knowledge of the anomalies at the various locations. What they found were hundreds upon hundreds of audio documents, videos, writings, notes, log files, test files, and other forms of documentation from the organization talking about the different anomalies and their knowledge of them. One video file of particular was of particular interest to Crescent for this specific anomaly, addressing the disappearances, deaths, and odd circumstances revolving around Atlantis theme park, even going as far as apologizing for them. The video itself is corrupted, being tampered with by an unknown force, glitching to footage that evidently was not in the original cut. It also seems like it was designed as part of a contingency plan, just in case the worst came to light and Archibald's Happiness Co. was either shut down or destroyed. However, the part that contradicts that theory is the video asking whoever is in possession of the tape to not release it to the public under any circumstance. So, if the video was created as a contingency, why would you still try and hide your own knowledge of the horrors that take place at your facilities, but then go out of your way to apologise for them? Makes no sense. Unless either apologising or the asking not to share to the public was a later addition to the video, which of these, however, is unknown. The following is the previously mentioned video titled Atlantis Theme Park, titled Eclipse, Security Video 909, Archibald's Happiness Company, 2-2-1. The photos contained within this footage are to be kept as classified and not to be released into the general public. While under investigation concerning deaths and disappearances at other attractions such as Happy Michaels and the the company have elected to keep the matters involving instant secret. If you are found in possession of this video with intent to release it to the public, you will be apprehended. The following acts as a testimony from the company to acknowledge the oddities and strange occurrences that take place within Atlantos Theme Park.
dispatched by staff. We would also like to apologize for the disappearances both at our restaurants as well as the unexplainable ones here at the park. More internal investigations are taking place in the hopes to understand the anomalous events that occur when the park goes silent. We thank you for your ongoing cooperation and support. We would also like to politely remind you not to share this tape with the public under any circumstance. This tape is the property of Archibald's Happiness and Company. After Crescent was made aware of Atlantis theme park and the hundreds of people that seemed to go there for a day out and never return, alongside finding the company's videos addressing each of the anomalies previously mentioned, Crescent immediately sent a research team to Atlantis theme park to analyse what exactly they were dealing with. So their first course of action was to send two E-personnel from Mobile Task Force Unit Omega-6 to the water park every day until the next eclipse took place. They waited 12 days after Crescent arrived until the next eclipse event, where in each day they were instructed not to go on any roller coasters or any of the attractions under any circumstance. However, on the 12th day, both E-443 and E-886 began sending disturbing and freakish reports of the park's guests being disfigured by rides, and a lot of them being killed. Blood covering the ground as people would return taller or smaller or with more arms than they had when they first entered the attraction. They broadcast for five hours until the eclipse event took place, where the broadcast sped up 800 times for 7 minutes and 32 seconds, until it slowed down to normal time and the research team were given a message by an unknown entity. After slowing the sped up broadcast down to normal speed, the group were astounded to find that the broadcast itself lasted 96 hours. The following are a couple of samples from said broadcast. Everything was usual about a minute ago. I mean, besides the deformed people wandering about the place, but still, there were children laughing and playing. Now, everything is deathly silent, and there's like this black shadow that's cast on everything. I can barely see what's in front of me. I, I feel like there's something here. The darkness, it, it feels alive. Base, are you there? Hello? Hello? Fuck, I... Look, I don't know if you can hear me, but all I'm getting on your end is really slow static. Like, it's basically just a deep drone at this point. Hello? Hello? Can anyone read me? Hello? Did you see that? The shade... It's not like in the shadows, it's, it's, it's moving. I, I noticed it earlier, but before the darkness came there. Have you, have, have you seen it yet? Yeah, I, I noticed, noticed it. it. Where the fuck is that going? Come on. All I can hear is the trickling of water. There were children in the pools. They aren't there anymore. We don't know if we should move or something, but we're hearing a lot of screaming. Something's here and it's... It's fucking picking people off. <laughs> it got him. Holy fucking shit, it got him. The, the fucking shadow room was haunting us. We saw it attack someone, but... But before that, it was fucking haunting us. It was... Larry. 
is nothing more horrifying than being above the abyss of the black ocean. But when the sun barely shines, when the moon allows the abyss to grow, then the abyss circles you. It swallows you whole. Because when the darkness swallows the air, then you'll never see the shadows that haunt you. When the eclipse had finished, Crescent sent in Mobile Task Force Unit Shade to carefully examine the state of the park and attempt to find any survivors. However, there was no sign of life throughout the whole park and everyone, including E-443 and E-886, were gone, as well as any trace of there being anyone there throughout the day at all. All the roller coasters had returned to their starting places, all the bins were empty, and all the pools were cleaned, like the whole ordeal had never happened. After this event, a severely disturbing question was asked by Dr. Coulson Grant. When the unknown entity references the Abyss, is he talking about Anomaly 6230, otherwise known as the Darkness, a separate plane of existence created to imprison a very powerful cosmic deity known as Typhon, which is also called the Abyss in and directly ties to Anomaly 20-5-3-8, the Machine, who acts as one of the guards to this said being. Typhon has also been theorised to be a similar being, or should I say a similar god, to the one mentioned in Anomaly 7802, When I Fell From Grace, which talks about an eldritch entity called Apothel, the bringer of silence and the healer of life, who is also imprisoned in his own separate dimensional plane, which has not been confirmed to be accurate by Crescent at this time. However, I digress. Questions asked about anomalies like these often cause headaches, as you could create meanings out of anything. For example, the entity mentioning the Abyss could be in reference to the Abyss under Nancy's Nursery in Anomaly 8-15-12-5, which could tie in because Nancy's Nursery is also owned and run by Archibald's Happiness & Co. However, it is still interesting, as Anomaly 20-5-3-8 acts as a guard for an imprisoned god that exists in Anomaly 6230. It stands to reason that Typhon, the being mentioned, is of the same primordial pantheon as Apothel, the god mentioned in Anomaly 7802, when I fell from grace. But if we are to believe that, then another question must be asked. Why would this demonic presence at Atlantis theme park have anything to do with any of the previously mentioned anomalies? What is coming for us, and what is so powerful that anomalies have started referring to these higher beings so frequently? Some food for thought. However, carrying on. Crescent shut Archibald's Happiness & Co. down for six months, allowing people to visit the park under their supervision. While looking into the other anomalies revolving around the company, they were also attempting to examine the next six eclipse events under controlled circumstances, wherein the Hundreds Test took place. Otherwise known as Project Century, the Hundreds Test is the idea that the entire park was to be filled with hundreds of heavily armed E-members broadcasting their comms. Because none of them went on any rides or partook in any activity, that they didn't deform in any way. However, this then seemingly changed, as some of them recalled hearing a convincing voice that caused them to ride some roller coasters. Exactly 47 Mobile Task Force Unit members went on the attractions and only 32 came out alive, all being severely deformed and disfigured, their helmets and weaponry seeming to have fused to their bodies and becoming one with them. Then the eclipse happened. After the normal E-members were tasked with killing all the contorts and leaving the gristle where it was, the fog descended on the park. The broadcast sped up again and over the next 64 hours, every single individual all reported the same thing that E-443 and E-886 had, to which a lot of them were separated and eventually were all killed. However, just before their death, they all claimed to see a shadow or shade grabbing people and pulling them into the darkness. After Project Century's failure, Dr. Carson, the lead researcher on this particular anomaly, recommended another course of action, 
which would later be referred to as Project Starvation. Project Starvation was simple. Crescent shut down the park for good, and when the next eclipse came round, the park would be completely empty. However, this quickly went wrong. On the day of the next eclipse, people began feeling drawn to the park and entered it. 32 E-members, 15 members of research staff, and 20 members of the general public wandered in, and then anyone else that attempted to enter was warded away. No audio documentation was found, and when the eclipse was over, just like the rest, there was no sign of any of the people that had entered previously. Crescent then authorised the start of Project Candle, the idea being to stop the next eclipse with any and all kinds of lighting. Once the electrical equipment failed, the park was then set on fire. The following is an audio recording from said incident. Warning. The results of this test have been redacted and are not to be talked about under any circumstance. Please, input your ID credentials. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.